25 now. We are now hearing from the driver who was behind the wheel when this piece of dangerous debris smashed through his windshield. The victim was driving on I-95 in Delray Beach when that heavy metal slammed into his car. And incredibly, he only suffered some cuts from all of that broken glass. Local 10's Ian Margul is live now with more. Ian. Imagine you are driving on I-95. You're going full speed and all of a sudden there is just an explosion of glass. That is what this man describes happened to him just yesterday and he and his wife are saying it is a miracle he's alive. Because if it would have been a smaller vehicle, that person would have not been able to tell their story. Eduardo Rivera is feeling lucky to be alive. He tells us on Tuesday he was driving home from work on I-95 and noticed a flatbed tow truck pull in front of him. He doesn't speak much English, so his wife Norma Rodriguez tells us what happened next. All he heard was an explosion because it fell right onto his um, window shield. It broke the glass. Stunned and still unsure of what had happened, Eduardo pulled over. And when he got his wits about him, this is what he found. A big, heavy piece of metal had fallen from the truck, bounced off the roadway, and smashed through his Ford F-150's windshield, stopping inches from his face, halted only by his steering wheel. Yeah. It's like eight or ten inches from him. Looking at the damage, it's almost unbelievable that Eduardo only had minor cuts from the glass on his face. In fact, he and Norma say they're both religious and think he was being protected by a higher power in those moments. He has a little angel in his vehicle that fell, that fell right on top of him. Um, and not one single piece of glass fell in his eyes. He walked out in one whole person. Thanks to God. So the Florida Highway Patrol says the driver of that truck that the metal fell off of did not stop. In fact, they don't know who it was. They're still looking for that person. They also say this is a good example that if you are driving with something in your truck or on the back of your car, you must secure your load because anything that falls off, you are responsible for. Live in Delray Beach, I'm Ian Margul. Local Counting his blessings, no doubt about that. Ian, thanks a lot. Miami police are now searching for a cold-blooded killer after a senior was found stabbed to death in his home by his daughter. It happened at this home in the 2300 block of Southwest 22nd Terrace. Police say they got a call from the victim's daughter who went to check up on her dad. An investigation is now underway. We are talking to neighbors, possible witnesses, reviewing cameras in the area, uh, but we need to put the person or persons uh, responsible for this uh, horrific crime behind bars immediately. Police have yet to release the victim's name. Another day of questioning for President Trump's Supreme Court nominee on Capitol Hill today. And meanwhile, we are following breaking news about the president's son, Barron. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ross Palumbo following it all for us live down from Washington. Ross. And Calvin and Nicole breaking right now, live pictures from Capitol Hill, where day three of confirmation hearings are underway. This is the second day of questioning for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. And at this moment, Senator and vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris questioning Barrett over voting rights. And again, few answers on these key questions from Democrats all day long. Good morning. Welcome, Judge. On her second day of questioning, Democrats again asking Judge Amy Coney Barrett about the powers of the president who nominated her. Does a president have an absolute right to pardon himself? It's not one on which I can offer a view. Even when asked once more whether the Constitution gives a president authority to delay an election, although it clearly does not, Barrett still refusing any response. Is that still your response? It would be inappropriate for me to make a comment. Democrats also again asking about Obamacare, but now not whether she would end it, but whether she has ever supported it. Yes or no? No, I've never had occasion to speak Thank on you. the policy question. And so every time you've waited on it, you said the law is unconstitutional. Republicans using their time to once again praise Judge Barrett. Above all, it's clear that you understand the appropriate role of a judge, just what we're looking for, at least on this side of the aisle. But in the, the process, Republican Chair Congress Lindsey Graham drawing criticism for insensitive comments about segregation. You're not aware of any effort to go back to the good old days of segregation by a legislative body, is that correct? 
That is correct. Meanwhile, after Trump has been claiming for months that the Obama administration spied on him, among other alleged crimes with zero evidence. The Obama campaign spied on our campaign. Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. It's a massive thing. Now, the Washington Post reporting that the unmasking probe commissioned by Attorney General Barr has concluded without charges or any public report. Barr himself not commenting. If there's a report that there's no violations of the law, I'd like to know that. The president, with 20 days to go, while down in the polls, campaigning across seven states this week alone. At another mostly mask-free rally, Trump taking a poll of who's had the virus while making more unscientific claims of immunity. Who's had it? Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. Well, you're the people I want to say hello to because you're right now immune. Also breaking right now, First Lady Melania Trump just tweeting out a very long statement saying her son, Barron, a 14-year-old, also tested positive for coronavirus in the White House. He since tested negative and the president addressing all of this himself just a few moments ago. Barron's fine and Amy is doing a fantastic job. We're heading out to Iowa. Well, the president himself saying that he tested negative just the other day. The president, as you just heard, Calvin and Nicole, says he's headed to another campaign rally, this one in Iowa. We'll have the latest on that new tonight at 11. Ross Bonneville Live for us. Ross, thanks a lot. Well, the divisiveness of this election is deepening, and now President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden will hold dueling town halls tomorrow following the cancellation of the second presidential debate. Biden will hold his town hall in Philadelphia. It'll be broadcast by ABC. Former President Obama plans to hit the campaign trail for Joe Biden next week and intends to focus on early voting states. The schedule has not been finalized, but Florida, North Carolina, and Wisconsin are under consideration. The events will be socially distant and designed to draw local media coverage. Meanwhile, President Trump is coming to South Florida to hold his town hall. The president's event will take place outdoors at the Perez Art Museum in Miami and will be broadcast by NBC. Miami-Dade elections workers tested the voting machines today in Doral. They cast ballots according to a predetermined outcome, and then those practice votes are tabulated to make sure the numbers match up and are transmitted correctly. Supervisor of Elections Christina White is predicting an historic 80% turnout, with the majority choosing to vote by mail and take advantage of early voting at 33 early voting sites. More than 610,000 vote-by-mail ballots have been sent out in Miami-Dade County. More than 140,000 have already been returned. And let's turn now to the latest COVID-19 number is Florida reporting close to 2,900 new cases in the last 24 hours with 64 new resident deaths. The state's positivity rate is at about 5%. Miami-Dade with 434 new infections. 20 more people have died in the county. The positivity rate is also above 5% in 265 new cases reported in Broward County along with three new deaths. The positivity rate is just over 4%. The Broward County Teachers Union is reporting one teacher is infected at Park Trails Elementary. A student also tested positive at Chapel Trail Elementary. The City of Pembroke Pines also confirmed a first grader at the West Campus of Pembroke Pines Charter Elementary has tested positive for the virus. And this comes as Broward schools welcomed their second wave of students to physical classrooms yesterday. Also yesterday, school board members were discussing a proposed policy to ensure all students wear masks without exceptions. The proposal comes after some board members complained about athletes not being required to wear one. And according to the Miami-Dade County Public Schools coronavirus dashboard, two employees have tested positive along with 11 students. One of those employees works at Coral Park Elementary and we're told it is a roving teacher, which is why the school has switched to online learning for the time being. That school had two students test positive as well. And time now to check on the tropics. Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis is here with your t- tropical update. Betty. Hey, we're still keeping watch on that disturbance. Uh, it's nearing the Eastern Caribbean islands but clearly on the infrared satellite imagery is not looking like much as it cannot organize because the upper level winds are so strong. So the development potential on this continues to be low as it moves toward the west-northwest, just a 10% chance per the National Hurricane Center. 
bringing some rain. We'll bring some rain to parts of those islands, but it doesn't appear as though this is going to organize. I'll be back in a few minutes with a check on the forecast for tomorrow and the weekend. Nicole. Thank you, Betty. The man accused of attacking a woman on a Metro mover in Miami faced a judge this morning. The judge ruled Joshua King is competent to proceed to trial after two reports found he was. During the hearing, the judge also told King he needs to stay in Leon County and cannot leave without permission. King was caught on surveillance video beating a woman riding a Metro mover on September 4th. The 25 year old was arrested and released on bond. He was ordered to wear a GPS monitor while he stays with his family in Tallahassee. Meanwhile, lawyers for a man who was also attacked on a Metro mover filed a lawsuit against the security company today. The attorneys for 73 year old Eduardo Fernandez are seeking $30,000 in damages after they claim that seconds before the attack, a security guard with Allied Universal saw Fernandez and his attacker, but didn't take any action. Miami Beach police making a couple of arrests on busy Collins Avenue today. Officers arrested Alexander Williams, who they say is a documented gang member who was wanted for murder in New York. Williams was taken into custody at 10th Street and Collins Avenue. Officers also arrested Martis Daniels, who they say had a gun, armor-piercing bullets, and even drugs. Right now, it's 510, and we are watching two crashes on I-95 in Miami. And let's go to Janice Fernandez with that, Janice. And we're actually following a traffic alert for you. There is this car fire on I-95. This is going to be right at Ives Dairy Road, and you can see there that the flames have been put out, but we do have two lanes blocked because of this situation on I-95. Again, this is on I-95 at Ives Dairy Road. Let me show you how this looks like on our map, so because we're seeing very heavy delays as you're heading northbound. Two right lanes blocked because of this car fire again has been put out, but it is blocking those lanes with your speeds coming in at 16 miles per hour. I'm also watching another incident on I-95. This is also going to be northbound, but this is right around Northwest 135th Street. There's a left lane blocked with this and again a whole lot of red. Really just expect to see the red as you're heading northbound on the I. Your speeds coming in there at just 12 miles per hour. Calvin. Okay, thanks a lot, Janice. The suspect in the killing of a popular high school football coach faced a judge today. He's only 15 years old, but he is charged as an adult. We'll tell you why he'll be staying behind bars until his trial, all new at 6. Yeah. Well, they tried to steal his wheels in his driveway, but he hit the gas you see there and the getaway car before they started shooting. We'll show you how a neighbor ran to help out. Coming up. And I'm at Sovella in Key Largo, where this neighborhood has been having flooding issues for years. We'll tell you how they're trying to fix it and how it works. 